Hello everyone, um, I'm Dr. Juliana Jamaldi and I'm a resident of the Inner West. Um, to start with, systemic racism is embedded in every fibre of our society. Too many Australians and sadly many within this LGA bear the brunt of it in our everyday lives. The troubling rise of far-right nationalism both overseas and here, as well as the more insidious forms of racism continues to rear its ugly head again and again. This year in Australia, the COVID-19 pandemic has seen Asians targeted in particular, as documented in the report, I Am Not A Virus by Erin Chu. But this isn't anything new. Being a child of the 90s in Australia, my childhood and early adulthood was characterized by the horror of 9-11 and the subsequent bomb threats that occurred at my Islamic school, the Cronulla riots, dealing with anti-terrorism raids and racial vilification within the media and near constant Islamophobic and racist attacks. Now as an adult, those incidents haven't decreased or improved. In fact, they've morphed and changed and rear themselves up in different ways. It's not always the racial slurs being yelled at at a car park or threats of violence, though that has happened at a shopping center recently. It's also all the other ways people of color are made to feel different and othered and treated with inequality. It occurs when a patient tells me they'd rather have a different doctor to them before I've even said hello. It occurs when I'm ignored again and again, despite standing at the counter waiting for my turn to be served. It occurs when people look at me differently and comment on my scarf and tell me my English is pretty good without knowing anything about me. It occurs when no one speaks up and bystanders stay silent. Racism isn't just name calling, it's institutional, it's systemic. It occurs everywhere and has been baked into the very foundation of Australia's history when the sovereignty of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders was denied and it continues on with custodial deaths and the significant and lasting inequalities that affect experience. our Indigenous brothers and sisters. Will a street sign change all of this? No, but what it does do is start a conversation. It tells those who are emboldened to act in racist ways that racism is not welcome in the inner West and subsequently throughout Australia. It encourages allyship and bystander action. It allows for difficult conversations to happen. It strengthens our sense of community and it sends the message that the inner West council is on the right side of history and will not tolerate injustice and bigotry. The signs of racism not welcome is the start to a difficult and long overdue journey for this country to change and to show to the world that we believe in equality and justice and will not tolerate racism here, now and moving forward. Thank you for your time. When I get up every day, it's a political struggle because of the skin I'm in. I'm a black African woman born in Uganda and I came to Gadigal lands when my father sought political asylum in the early 90s. I share the experience of many African children who are teased because of the lack of representation in our everyday narrative. I spent much of my teens becoming immersed into hip hop culture because the stories I heard was something I could relate to. The consciousness that connected me to becoming a proud African woman is being and being and is where I discovered my purpose and passion to be a hip hop artist. My teachers were hip hop MCs like KRS-One who said, teach a student what needs to be taught because black and white kids both get shorts. When one doesn't know about another one's culture, ignorance swoops down like a vulture. My four-year-old daughter started preschool at a center in Marrickville last year. She was so excited to make friends, to learn and have educators to support her. When I picked her up from her first day, I asked how was school? She said some girls told her that she couldn't play with them because she's brown. She told me she wants to be white so that other children can like her. I still have the conversations with her, but I can't be the only one teaching my daughter about racism and how to defend herself. She has been denied the justice she deserved, but yesterday when she stood in front of the racism not welcome sign and took a picture with a big smile, I felt that she got the justice she deserved. In a podcast that I produced with the Inner West Multicultural Network, I documented the stories about racism and discrimination taking place nationwide and locally. The story of Ursula Jovic, an Aboriginal Serbian award-winning actor, singer, songwriter, told us about the everyday subtle racism she experienced with her daughter. The experience of not being served, a customer walks into the store and is served before her and treated with top shelf customer service. In that episode, she shares how her daughter then asked her, why did they ignore you, mum? 
In that moment, Ursula decided that the days of being quiet, shushing up and not saying anything were over. She told them that her, the treatment of her was unacceptable. We hear about racial profiling and Islamophobia and COVID-19 linked slurs and attacks. Anti-Asian racism has been documented through the I Am Not a Virus survey and has collected 370 stories and counting, and that's just during COVID. These are racist incidents taking place in 2020 in the West. If the most progressive council says no to this anti-racism campaign, then we will never achieve an equal society. We must stand up globally and start with an action to symbolize and acknowledge that racism is not welcome. This, are not, this is all it takes to symbolize allyship, not co-opting and standing in solidarity. For any councillors here who may say racism doesn't exist, you're silencing the voices of the people in your community and silence is violence. I quote from Lizzie Jarrett, a Gumbengi, Bunjalung and Dangadi woman and Inner West resident. Racism has no place in the human race. We are all born human, so it's about time we all stood up for humanity as a whole and call out racism everywhere and every time we see it. One love, one race, human race, bringing unity to the community. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mayor. It is a difficult uh, circumstance, I must admit. Thank you to Juliana and Gladys, and I'm delighted to conclude our defence of item 10. The path ahead for the inner west and later for Australia is to proclaim loudly, publicly and visibly that we're united against division, against discrimination on all grounds, especially race, and for everyone who enters or lives in the inner west, see prominent proud statements that racism is not welcome. Well, as you've heard, and as COVID has uncovered and moreover exacerbated, racism does exist. It is here. It is the daily lived experience of too many Australians. And we all have a responsibility to stand together against this rise of prejudice because we know where it leads to a community and a world where people are unsafe. Why is this community and your local council areas and all areas so important? Why must we act to install these racism not welcome signs across the inner west? Because as worthwhile as prominent national campaigns are, racism is not fought through our television sets or mobile phones. It's eradicated in every local street, every local cafe, every community park, every local library, and a fair and equal life for all is built conversation by conversation in our buses, not on them, in our local businesses, not on their poster walls, in every human interaction that we have at local level. That 2020 has seen a worrying rise in racism in Australia and around the world is not in dispute, and nor should be either our obligation, our desire or our willingness to challenge it every day in every possible way. The great Mahatma Gandhi said, we must be the change that we wish to see in the world. It's not enough friends to say that you and I do not support the insidious harmful and destructive cloud of racism. I'm not asking you to make a strong public statement for yourself, but to stand as leaders with all those who've made reports of discrimination, with your Chinese Australian community, your called communities, those who've done all they can to raise their voice to ask for our help. Indeed, I'm asking you to stand with Juliana and with Queen G. We can answer their call tonight, and I ask you to do so by accepting the motion to become Australia's first local council to proclaim that in your area, racism is not welcome. And we can start a movement that shows the world, not only that Australia passionately rejects discrimination of all kinds, but that we're all willing to be the change that we wish to see. Please accept the motion and thank you. Uh, thank you. And I start by thanking uh, Juliana and Queen Jean Craig for making the time to speak to all of us tonight for their commitment to the Racism Not Welcome to ca campaign and to the Inner West Multicultural Network for all the work they've done on this. It's been a real privilege to watch the network bring this campaign together over the last few months or so, even through all the challenges of COVID. And I hope that what they're seeking from us tonight will be supported because it's completely in line with the strong stands against racism that we've always taken. And of course, the Secretariat role we already play as part of that network. And I think it's a really exciting opportunity for us to provide a national example of how communities can work together from the grassroots up to tackle racism. And our speakers and the background to my motion, I think have provided a lot of evidence as well as for any of us who've been following the news as to why taking action against racism at this particular moment in time is very important. So 
What I thought I'd add to that is a little bit about why this work is personally important to me. As some of you know, I am an Asian Australian British person. I came to Australia as a baby in the late 70s after being born in Indonesia, uh, where my mum is from and where she and my Australian dad had met. That was just a few years after the White Australia policy had been rolled back by the Whitlam government. And while some parts of Australia, like here in the inner west, were already very multicultural, the area my parents moved to on the central coast was not. And to this day, the legacy of growing up as one of the only brown kids there is that I don't speak Indonesian. I don't feel any real connection to the culture. I don't have really anything of that side of myself to pass down to my daughter because as a child, I didn't want it. I, I experienced so much racist abuse and ignorance growing up that all I wanted was to not be different. And I would go to sleep at night wishing I'd wake up in the morning as a little kid with white skin and blonde hair and blue eyes because I thought that's how everyone was supposed to look. And it really, it actually kind of broke me a bit to hear Queen G talk about how her daughter now at the age of four is feeling the same way. By the time I hit adulthood in the 90s, which is the period Juliana spoke about, we had Pauline Hanson entering the Senate telling everyone that Australia was being swamped by Asians. And so my family and I got to experience that backlash all over again. I'm proud of who I am today. I know the color of my skin and my mixed heritage is a gift, but you don't ever get over feeling like your own country doesn't want you and you don't belong anywhere. And that of course has very real and dangerous consequences for people of color all across Australia to this day. So I commend the Inner West Multicultural Network for developing this important campaign as a way of inspiring change and activism within our community and across Australia, and I commend the motion to you. I must say, uh, I am a walk. This is what was said to me when I first arrived to Australia 40 years ago. Since then, I really, even when I was the mayor of Marrickville, delivering the most advanced multicultural activities and the programs, as a mayor, I was really subject to racist comments, like I am Lebanese, for example. That's not to say I was very, very proud to say I am Australian, I am in Australia, but I am from that background. And I was encouraged to be a leader in my community. All the people knows where I'm coming from and most of the people supported me. I'm not saying there is no racism. I'm not saying we done a lot to really face racism and do some achievements on that. All what I'm gonna say, and I'm very, very honest on this, we did very well. We still need to do more and more, especially, especially when in America, it was very clear that the racist strategy to win the election was done very badly by Mr. Trump. And thanks God, he lost the election. Now, that bad blood started to move in Australia because we don't like Chinese. Chinese. Chinese is the problem. And we've seen it in the street, in the inner west. And some friend, Chinese background, approached me and raised these issues with me. I talk from my heart because I do believe we should get together and support this new move, new group. And we have to be very proud of it that we always take the advantage to show 
that we are a multicultural area. Last thing I want to say, we've done very, very good in the Inner West as since we established the multicultural committee, we've done a lot and we will continue to do more. And in this occasion, I would like to thank all the councillors, especially Pauline and the mayor and the other councillors. We had discussions how to support the ethnic presence here and there and there. And we've done the Portuguese, we've done the Italian, we've done the Greek, and we are very close to have the Chinese and Vietnamese. But because of the COVID-19, uh, we couldn't done it, but we will, we will continue. All these things, they are the positive uh, things to stop and conquer the racist uh, theory in Australia. Thank you.